These aren't the stories your mother told you. No, these are the other stories. <laughs> It's important to us at The Other Stories to approach every story with sensitivity and respect for all cultures and backgrounds. This episode contains historical language and references that are considered offensive, including outdated terms for Native American individuals. Listener discretion is advised. The Other Stories proudly presents Swift Bear and Laxon, Chapter 1, Boss Dannon's Boss, written by Richard Reynolds and narrated by Justin Fife. They called him Swift Bear. His own people turned their back on him account of his being some kind of freak of nature. Faster than any horse born and about strongest some bitch I ever seen. Prone to visions of his heathen bear god putting him on track of unnatural abominations. I found that out later. This here's the story of how him and me, the wretched son of a preacher, good for nothing but pulling a pistol, become sort of partners, roaming the land, hunting creatures from Satan's own asshole. I go by Laxon, Mock Laxon. My pa tried to bring me up good, teach me the Lord's word, but I weren't never interested in nothing but guns, hunting, fighting, and chasing strange. First chance I got, I blew tan, selling my gun hand to whoever was buying. Over the years, I traveled all over, picking up bad habits of speech and behavior, doing a lot of bad things for a lot of bad men, but none so ruthless as Boss Dannon. You heard about Dannon's type of four. Cattle Baron owned more land than you could ride across in two days, had the law in his pocket and a town to call his own. Sweetwater. Ran with an iron hand. But Dannon took it further. He had a kind of smaller town set up for his workers away down the Seto, the river he built his operation around. Most workers being cowboys but a handful, like me, took up special duties. We was run by Dannon's personal guard, fella's name... Davis and O'Shannon, big, mean son of bitches, resided with the boss in a house further down the set of steel. Dannon had two rules regarding his land. He didn't tolerate free grazing, and anyone traveling through there were to secure written permission from the boss himself. My job was to watch over a stretch. If an I come across free grazers, was to shoot them on sight bring their bodies and herds on back. Running into travelers, I was to escort them to Dannon's to secure permission. By force, if warranted. Thing was, I'd begun wondering what was really befallen them folk. Never seen a one emerge from Dannon's place. Could have been my advancing years or my sins weighing heavy, but my conscience started getting the better of me. I was taking a two-caravan party to the boss when I first caught sight of Swift Bear. He was at yon bank of the Seto, kinda sniffing at the water before dunking his whole head in. You speak American, you heathen shit! I shouted over the sound of the river that separated us as he resurfaced. He stared me down. Well, I ain't chasing you, so head on due east and take your godless whatever you're doing off boss Dannon's property. He didn't move none, so I pulled my Colt Dragoons and shot holes by his feet. He inspected the river a while longer before moving on. That's right, get, I said to his back. Delivering the travelers to Dannon at the house, the boss presented a sort of whimsy he only displayed in the presence of children, which the party had too. You done a fine job, Lexington. He said, leading me away. Go on and get you some dinner. I headed off, but needing to know what was going on with them travelers, secreted myself behind a barn. I couldn't hear none, but saw Dan and cooing over a young girl, 
pulling her by the hand to his house. She tried to pull away, but he didn't relent, so a man I assumed was her daddy started kicking up a fuss that was met with the butt of O'Shannon's rifle, knocking him out cold. Women started screaming, and two men made a move, one backing off when Davis pulled his pistol, the other in getting gut shot. Down on your knees, Davis yelled, and all but a feisty woman complied. I couldn't make out what she screeched, but Davis laughed, whereupon the vicious cocksucker hit her no different than she was a man. She was on the ground, half senseless, when Davis dropped, unbuttoned his pants, and unsheathed his other weapon. The men started to rise, but O'Shannon trained his firearms, causing them to wilt under their own shame. I done the kind of dog shit things in my time that'll stain your soul black. But hand on heart, I ain't never molested no woman nor child, and I can hardly stand to tolerate it. So, it was about here when my conscience done put its foot down and decided enough was enough. I pulled both my Colts and fired a warning while advancing on Davis and O'Shannon. Put your Johnson back in your britches, I hollered, drawing close to the party, without a damn idea what to do next. But another shot rang out, robbing me of the need. Dumb asshole I am, I turned to see Dannon in his doorway, then realizing my foolishness, turned back to receive O'Shannon's rifle butt in my face. I came to, tied to a tree with some other guy. I'm looking round, saw the whole party was tied to trees where the woodland comes right to the bank of the fastest, deepest part of the seto. Stretch a river that'll drag you to your death quicker than you could cut a fart. Oh, Shannon and Davis, him wearing my damn belt and shooters, tied a long rope, one end round the gutshot man, the other a tree, then tossed him in the river. Which pulled him along, cracking the rope taut, leaving the poor bastard flopping in the current, his blood carrying downstream. Dannon emerged from someplace and called out, They're yours, shadow! Then, all hell broke loose. A child screamed and falling its gaze some ways down river. I saw a huge swell was driving against the flow. The back and fin of some stupendous creature broke the surface. And in its wake, four more things was driving in and out like huge salmon. As they got closer, the party screamed in unison. A giant hand emerged from the river, dragging down the gutshot man, snapping his tether effortless. Then, the pursuing creatures burst out of the water, landing bankside, garnering hysterics from the party and a Christ alive from myself, who ain't too proud to admit near fouling in my undergarments. These water devils cut a man's figure, but between the legs was a tail as thick as a gator's thin running neck to tail, their skin gray and slippery, and a stink too added fishy qualities. Thick lips barely concealed needle sharp teeth, and black eyes took up a majority of the skull. Then, something way, way off caught my eye. A man was running right to us, faster than a damn steam engine. But screams brought my attention back to the water devils taking bites from a feller and slurping at the foreign blood. This is what you've been doing to all that's passed through, you evil bastard! I shot at Dannon as he looked on approving like. We've all got our boss's election, and I do for mine as you do for yours, as I'm damn well called, he said. My attention was pulled elsewhere, with the sound of rope snapping. Then water devils was done ravaging and was proceeding to throw two blood dry folk in the water, where the hand of the Leviathan dragged them under. 
the running man was already at yon bank. And shit me if it weren't the heathen from up the river, who I later come to know a swift bear. He leaped into the air, pulling a kind of bone knife, grabbing it twixt his teeth before hitting the water at a slick dive, swimming, I shit you not, across the current. What the fuck is that? Hissed Dannon, pointing Bear out to his men. As the Leviathan made a grab, but Bear was too fast. He'd caught the bank and slashed a gash across the fingers of that great hand, then dragged himself ashore. Them water devils gone to work on another fella. A bear rushed him with the force of a bull, sprawling him groundward. One devil screeched, but swiffer than I could see. A bear slashed at its neck, then spun and kicked out, popping its head clean off. Its kin cried out, and O'Shannon, seeking to intervene, took aim on the brave. Don't shoot, hollered Dannon. You might hit the spar. Bear threw another devil. It landed close to me but he was on it quick, stabbing until it quit moving. Engine, I yelled, seeing O'Shannon closing in. Bear responded by throwing him into Davis, grounding them both. The devil had taken their lead, though, and started slashing at Bear's back. Bear grunted, spun, and cut off its hand. Got the fucking savage, shouted Dannon as his men scrambled. Davis pulled a dragoon and put it point blank on Bear as he cut on the devil, but I kicked at the pistol, firing it skyward, alerting Bear who turned on Davis, throwing him at O'Shannon, putting them both out for a time. You're gonna have to kill them, I said, or they'll keep coming at you. A silent look told me he wasn't in the business of killing no man. Then turn me loose, damn you. You need help. Guess he agreed as my bonds was cut and his knife put in my hand. Another shot rang, stopping the action dead. They were ye damned, Dannon said. Rifle pointed at me. I looked at Bear, and Bear glanced at the knife, and I took his meaning and hurled it at Dannon, missing by a country mile, but distracting enough for Bear to cover the ground and knock his old ass out. Boss! called Davis, finding his feet. You take the monsters. I'll take the assholes, I told Bear, making for the discarded knife. Blade in hand, I tackled Davis, knocking him down and the colt from his grasp. I had him pinned, knife to his throat when O'Shannon put his rifle barrel to my head. I started to raise my hands, but hit the barrel away and dive for my colt, grabbing it as I rolled, putting a bullet through O'Shannon's eye. Davis had started to draw, and I put another through his arm. These are mine, shitface, I said, removing my gun belt from him as he moaned, then ended his sorry laugh. When I next saw Bear, he was restraining the devil gnashing at a traveler. The people, he said to me, dragging it away. I cut their ties and told them to get, and into the woods they fled. Bear had the devil lifted clear in the air and brought it down over his knee, damn near snapping it in two, and then threw it into the river. Bad move. When that leviathan got wind its kin was dead, it reared out the water with a sound like which I'd never heard. This bastard was more fish than man, but big as a whale, and when it flopped to land, revealed arms and legs barely powerful enough to drag its engorged self along. Weapon, Bear said. I threw his knife, which he caught mid-leap, soaring high enough to plunge it into the monster's huge eye, slashing down through its face as he descended. It howled and contorted in agony, rolling to its side. No! Danon screamed running at us, firing weapons, but missing us both. Man couldn't shoot worth a shit, but he put himself between us and his awful boss. No closer, he warned. My response, to which being to shoot him both legs, 
He'd hardly fell when Bear ran the length of the writhing monster, slicing it deep as he did. Amongst the gore that spilled out was a wave of kind of green sludge that splashed over Danny, and curse my eyes if it didn't burn and melt away his flesh. Through his screams, I remember thinking that for what he'd done, Danny deserved this and more. But shit, I wouldn't wish this death on a no-ball broke-pecker mule, so I ended his pain with a bullet between the eyes. Never having found out what unholy covenant he struck up with that river demon. Later, while attending his wounds, the little I got out of Swift Bear was that saving the souls of man by felling spirits and demons that might consume him was his calling. Shit, that sounded like God's work to me. Maybe something my pa could regard well. And being that I had amends to be making, if and was I was to balance out the scales of my soul, I asked if I could have his back, cover the evil and men that might intrude on his work. He never answered, just took off at a running. And liberating Dan and Spry Stallion, I went ahead and followed him. Have done ever since. Today's episode of The Other Stories was Swift, Bear and Laxon, Episode 1, Boss Dannon's Boss. Written by Richard Reynolds, narrated by Justin Fife, produced by Carl Hughes with music by Roy Bush Band and Cube Sounds and Tom Robson. The sound effect provided by freesound.org. The episode illustration was provided by Luke Spooner of Carry On House. A quick thanks to our community managers, Joshua Boucher and Jasmine Arch, and to Joshua Boucher for helping with our submission reading. And of course to Ben Errington, the prospector of Digital Gold, mining the depths of the weird west of social media. Richard Reynolds is the owner and operator of Ground Zero Comics, a small shop in Mansfield, England, but writes, draws, and produces his own comics and strips <laughs> whenever he gets the chance. You can read these comics for free on the shop's website, groundzerocomics.co.uk, under the free comics sidebar. Justin Fife is a voice actor and podcaster. You can follow him on Twitter at, at Justin B. Fife. The Other Stories is a production of the story studio Hawk and Cleaver and is brought to you with a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. That means don't change it, don't sell it, by all means share the hell out of it. Until next time. <laughs>